Flacco is your number one seed. He's been impressive all weekend, all weekend long. Excuse me, not to take anything away from Milton. But the first seed gets the option, so the black deck will be on the play. A little handshake. And let's get our Sunday underway. What do you say? I'm ready to go. All righty. It's going to be a Temple of Silence to begin today's play. You see a Desecration Demon over there in DeCandio's hand. He's going to put the top card on the bottom, Figueroa. He's going to take a draw. We'll see if he's got a one drop to start. He does, and it will be the best one drop in Cloudfin Raptor to get the ball rolling. And again, for those of you who are just starting to tune in this weekend, or right now, rather, to this weekend's tournament, Milton has removed Frostburn Weird from his deck for Omen Speaker, which is... A very, very uncommon deck selection choice in Mono Blue Devotion. So you could almost say a controversial decision. Yes, there has been some controversy, certainly. However, it has. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a conscious decision as well, knowing that yes, I could play Frostmoon like everybody else is, but I prefer Omen Speaker, and maybe it's just better than Mono Blue Devotion Mirror because when we watched him play the Mono Blue Devotion Mirror against Dustin Biggers. It looked impressive then. Here's your Tidebinder Mage, going to evolve the Raptor. Raptor's going to come across for one, and DeCandio's going to go down to 19. He'll take an untap, he'll take a draw, and predictably the Packrat's going to live through the turn as the Orzhov Guildgate is added to the hand. And we'll see if he's just going to go ratting, or if he wants to play that Night Veil Spectre. And Packrat on the draw is one of the harder things for Mondo Blue to beat. Yes. It does not appear that Milton has Cyclonic Rift or Rapid Hybridization, so he's basically Priced into just trying to race, which is not an easy thing to do. DeCandio is just going to play his third land and pass the turn back, so Tidebinder Rage can get in if it would like to, but Figaro looks like he's going to start off with a one drop here. There's a Judge's Familiar. It will not evolve the Raptor. The follow up play of Omen Speaker, however, will. So, Omen Speaker is going to get a little scry action going, and you can see exactly exactly, excuse me, what Figaro is doing, which is going up the board right now. Yeah, he's trying to get pressure in the air, which is good against Packrat, and develop his board, so. It's going to be an uphill battle, but he's got a little bit of game here. Across for four comes Figueroa. Discard Orzov Guildgate. That's a good place for that card. Put it, yeah. Just put it in the old graveyard. Straight in the graveyard. Yeah. That card stinks. He's just going to take the damage. Going to go down to 15, but he wants to just assemble that pack rat army. A little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. If he ever does find a mute of all things, obviously spiral out of control as they'll be too big to handle for the mono blue deck. But it's a, you know it's kind of just a racing game at this point. Yeah, and I was about to say the exact same thing. It's unlikely that Bren's going to be able to completely contain what's happening in the air, so pretty soon he's going to be forced to just try to damage race, which is not the worst spot for Milton to be in. Of course, he's still behind the gun because of this pack rat, but as long as he can develop his board with flyers, he's got a reasonable shot. All right, so you see DeCandio is, you know, there's some decisions to be made. He's got a Desecration Demon, he's got a Night Veil Spectre, he's got a Temple of Silence. Does he want to scry? Does he want to attack first? He's just going to attack first before making any decisions. We'll see if Figaro has a block, as DeCandio is going to just make a rat, discarding Goblet Shrine, so it'll be an attack here for six. And there's a Temple of Silence. It's not played his lane yet, so we're going to do a little scry here. Figaro very anxious to take his turn, and now he does get the opportunity to untap as DeCandio puts the top card to the bottom. And now Figaro with four mana. Is it a Master? Is it a Jace? It is a Biden. And that is one of the better cards to find here. Yeah, he might not have time, unfortunately, to, to deploy all the cards that he's drawing, but this does help him find his significant cards, most notably here, Master of Waves and Psychonic Rift. These are the two cards he's really looking for. And he did find... A master of ways off those double dodge steps. Now, however, DeCandio, he put his top card to the bottom, but the card he drew this turn was a gooder. It is a copy of Mutavolt. And the damage is going to really start adding up now. Yep, he has enough mana this turn, of course, to both activate his Mutavolt and make a rat, so... Presenting a lethal attack. Yep. So there will have to be some amount of chump blocking to be done here. Now again, DeCandio does have a Desecration Demon and Nightfield Spectre in his hand, but there's really no need to cast either one of those right now. It's all in on the rats, and they're coming into the red zone. But if you look at DeCandio's hand, you see that he has no removal spell right now. He has a Land, a Desecration Demon, and a Nightfield Spectre, so it is possible that this Master of Waves could steal this game. Omen Speaker's on blocking duty. Uh, obviously, you see Figaro wants to leave Tidebinder Mage in play. Higher Devotion. For yes. the Master of Waves does show up to the party. So DeCandio is deciding, alright, do I want to make a rat? Do I want to force some more damage through? Do I maybe want to cast a Night Veil Spectre and slow down these beats in the air? 
Desecration Demon is probably the worst of the options given this turn, just because Figaro can control it. And if you're Decandio, you have to assume that, you know, he might have a Master of Waves hanging out in the hand, and he can really control it then. Yeah, additionally, with the land in his hand, he could possibly make a rat and cast Night Veil Spectre if he needs a Chump Walker in the air the following turn. Yeah. And now Desecration Demon is actually the card that's going to come down, as opposed to the Night Veil Spectre. So we'll see if this comes back to hurt Decandio, as Figaro is going to draw a card. Again, he has the Master of Waves. He's going to take the Islander right off the top of his deck. He's going to play the Master of Waves. You do the Devotion count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Elemental Tokens are coming into play. Yeah, this is definitely Terror or Bust next turn for Brennan. Yeah, it's going to take a removal spell. And now, all of a sudden, Pack Rat has kind of gone obsolete, and Elemental's going to get sacrificed to the Desecration Demon to allow the Flyers to push through. Tidebinder Mage could even feel a little frisky here. I don't think it's too great on defense at this point. Not really sure what exactly Milton is looking to draw at this point, as he still has a mana out for Rapid Hybridization, which is basically his best reactive trick, but he still wants to set up Lethal next turn. Yeah. He does not want this game to go much further into Decandio. You're looking for a removal sword right now. Now, he's got some in his deck. He does have two Last Breath, two copies of Ultimate Price. That didn't get him out of this situation. Ratchet Bomb's not so bad. One of those in the main deck. And, of course, four copies of Hero's Downfall. What won't save him will be those copies of Devour Flesh, as you see creatures getting into the red zone here. Three cards coming for the Mono Blue Devotion player. Again, the games that the Devotion decks do win, they sure do look impressive. Absolutely, yeah. And now... It's all on this draw step. Let's see what we find. It's a hero's downfall. So we still get to play some magic here. And now what you're going to want to do, I think if you're to hand you, you main phase of hero's downfall, take care of the master of waves, then you go to your attack step, see if Desecration Demon can do it, and that's going to do it. So yeah, all it did, it took one. All it did was take one. Yep. And he found it, did Decandio. A nice timely top deck of Heroes Downfall. And now your number one seed is up a game with black, white, mid range over Mono Blue. Been on a bit of a heater so far in these elimination rounds with this back against the wall. His critical Elspeth in game three of the quarterfinals, and now this Heroes Downfall. Of course, he has several other draws in his deck that could have gotten him out of that spot. But a lesson I've learned early in Magic you draw a card every turn. Yeah. And they're not in your deck to not draw. That's true. Copyright Dan Deardor. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bring it back to the booth here, guys, because it is trivia time. we got to give away our six months, and then we'll continue that match between Dick and Dio and, of course, Figueroa. However, we got to give away six months, so get your Twitters ready with the hashtag SCG Premium. I've got the question. Awesome. All right, so you, I'll let you do the rules, because we got to refresh people here. Right. It's early morning. Cedric's so going to ask a question about something pertaining to the semifinals. You are going to tweet that answer at SEG Live. You will hashtag SEG Premium. Or else. Among the correct answers, one will be selected, and that person will receive a half year of free Star City Games Premium content. Nice job. You did good at that. I'm proud of you. Thanks. Yeah, you did good. All right. Within Brandon DeCandio's deck, he's got a little innovative take on the black-white mid-range style. And within this deck, he's got some Planeswalkers, two to be exact. And if you can name the Planeswalker that he has two copies of, you win the prize. So name the Planeswalker that he has two copies of in his deck, integral to him winning his quarterfinals match yesterday against Mike Smith. Hashtag SCG Premium for your answer. Make sure you're following SCG Live on the old Twitter sphere. And again, we'll draw the winner at the conclusion of this match because it's the only one going in our semifinals. Heather Wilkinson is eagerly awaiting to see which one of these two players he's going to face. And right now, it looks like he's on his way for a pack rat match. Yes. So Lucky him. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky him indeed. We're going to bring it back to the match. We'll take a look at the sideboards here. I'll let you do Milton's. You seem like a mono blue devotion kind of guy. Kind of. Yeah. He has a rapid hybridization, four domestications, a Jace memory adept, two copies of Jace architect thought, a three copies of Gainsay, two Cyclonic Rift, one Dispel, and I'm not sure if you can make this one. Oh, a Bident, a sorry. Bident. A it, looks like a, Bident. it looks like Bident on his <laughs> registration sheet, so some confusion. I think in this matchup he's going to want to become, you know, he, he needs to fight two fights. One is just the removal attrition fight, so he wants his cards like Jace and Bident to slog through that. He also specifically needs to be concerned about Pack Rat, as we saw in that first game. Pack Rat is really hard for Mono Blue Devotion to beat, and so he's going to want ex po possibly his extra copy of Rapid Hybridization. I don't know if he's want to go so far as to play Cyclonic Rifts. Maybe he wants those on the draw, but he 
needs a mixture of things to win the attrition slash control battle and also to fight pack rat on spider-man's side because that is andrew garfield ratchet bomb two life bane zombies one sin collector two dark betrayal two doom blade one last breath three oves at ghost council two duress and a glare of heresy so cards to bring in this matchup and there's some ones that you can cross off right away life bane zombie I don't think it's going to come in because I think this is different than Tur what Turtonwald's trying to accomplish. Um, you know, we see Turtonwald bring that card in in this matchup sometimes, but I, I think these are different decks. He doesn't need to do that. Um, Dark Betrayal, since certainly on the board. Doomblade, come on in. Take care of Master of Waves. Last Breath, I think you can say the same. Also going to catch um, Nightville Zombie, or Nightville Spectre, excuse me, with that card. Oh, so that's probably too expensive. Duress is okay because actually some of Figaro's cards that actually matter in this matchup are spells. You've got Biden, you've got Jace, the card advantage engine, so maybe you do want more discard. I think Sin Collector is going to stay in the bench. I think there's a possibility to bring in that second Ratchet Bomb because of Master Wave's tokens. And the Aggro, dra uh, aggro Draw, excuse me, probably starts with just one Mana Flyers like Cloud and Raptor. And then last, Glare of Heresy. Well, not playing against a white deck, so leave that on the bench. Yeah, we have not seen Obzizat come in yet in the games that we've watched Brennan play. I suspect it is for decks that have Mizium Mortars uh, to swap out Blood Baron. Sure. As Obzizat's naturally good against red-green style decks and also can't be killed. But I wouldn't necessarily be surprised to see him bring in here as well to, sl to again, swap out for Blood Baron. So those are the options available, and both players have each other access to each other's deck lists, so they can uh, they can take a look. They know exactly what's coming for them, or at least they can try to assume. And Figueroa is going to be on the play here. He got off to a nice start. Actually, both players did yeah. in that game. No, and the Mono Blue Devotion deck, you know, turn two Pack Rat, especially on the draw, is one of those nightmare scenarios, but... Milton had a good mixture of gumming up the works and having some flyers to fly over a pack rat and nearly pulled that one out, if not for a timely hero's downfall from Brennan. Yeah, at the end of the day, DeCandio had one turn left to get there, which he did. And that's all she wrote. So we'll begin game number two here between these two fantastic players. Figaro will be on the play with Mono Blue. He looks like he's happy, happy. DeCandio, on the other hand, not so sure. Possible. It looks like a bunch of swamps says mana. No, he has a has a godless shrine as well. Two swamps. Looks like you're staring at the thought season and some other things. I mean, obviously some real options here. Lands and spells. How can you mulligan? Yeah, I've never thrown that back in my life. Yeah. I just don't like shuffling. That is true. Yeah. If it was magic on, I would just click yes. Right. Exactly. Makes it easy. All right, he's going to keep it. Going to risk it to get the biscuit. We're underway. A judge is familiar. Not the not the premier one drop in the deck, but could be good enough. And judge is familiar is actually pretty good against mono black and similar decks as they have three mana removal spells uh -huh. that they're trying to cast. So The judge is going to come across for one. DeCandio is going to go to 19. Figure out no two drop. Going to pass the turn back to rest of the draw step here for DeCandio. He's got access to both colors of mana. We'll see if he wants to lead off with Thassa's. The answer is yes. You see the hand of Thassa, Master Waves, Jace, Double Island. Thassa is certainly appealing in this situation. Yeah, Thassa is really good against black and, again, similar decks, as uh, it is both a very powerful threat and the games will often go long, so controlling your draw step over time is also quite valuable. And that's what's going to bite the dust. I think he was going to pass the turn right. Does want to cast a rest into... That judge is familiar. Attack from one. Will Figueroa. You see the Jace at the forefront of his hand. Tocandio picks up a pack rat. And that is quite good in concert with the duress he's planning on playing. So, you see a hand there of double Jace the master. So, the Jace was a redundant draw, but a good one there for Figueroa. Basically Certainly in important. Basically invalidating that duress. Mm -hmm. And now, rat's off to you. Says to Candio, pass the turn. Figaro will take a draw. Looked to be an omen speaker, I believe, but Judge's Familiar is where we're going to begin. The follow up play will likely be a Jace, so he can work towards devotion. This seems like a good spot for Jace. The question is, what do you do with Jace in this situation? Because it's very easy to say, okay, I'll just minus and get my cards, but then Pack Rack can finish it. If you plus it, it can just get Hero's Downfall, then you need to get any gain out of it. Well, I think he's happy to trade. A hero's downfall and Brennan's turn here as it frees up the Master of Waves. I would imagine we're plussing it because we can simply minus it the following turn if we're feeling so inclined. And 
Okay, we're gonna. Looks like Milton is taking a different path here. Yeah, I think it's a real risk. You see, he's gonna minus three or minus two. This turnover of Biden, the clown from Raptor and Island. I think it's a real risk if you just up and in does get Hero's downfall. Yes, it's the can it's the Candio's turn. However, didn't really accomplish anything. You tap four mana and basically discard a card almost to a certain extent. And with the cards in his hand of Master Ways Omen Speaker, you have to believe that. The mono black deck has a removal spell, or the black white deck, what have you. It has to believe that it has a removal spell for the master. Especially after sideboard, where he has access to additional Doom Blades and Lost Breaths. My concern is that, given how it's already pretty positive for Breton to be making a rat because of how it helps his long term development, making a play that allows him to just curve out efficiently this turn by making a rat. And killing Jace is, uh, I would try to find a different line, but at this point I defer to Milton's judgment as he's been very good on camera so far this weekend. See, Hollow Fountain picked up there into Candio's hand. That is no accident. Allows him to work his white splash along being able to cast Night Vale Specter all with one land. You a don't card see that very... actually kind of helped him win a match. Yeah, you, do, you don't see uh, these dual lands bridging hybrid mana spells very much anymore that was and, and certainly not in control deck so Brennan has definitely done a lot of work building this mana base and you see the hand right now there's multiple desecration demons there's an underworld connections that he picked up this turn the hollow fountain that we just mentioned and a last breath hanging out so he's trying to figure out how he wants to navigate this game is it worth it for me to just kill that jace play the hollow fountain maybe discard something how good is desecration demon in this spot a lot of questions to be answered here yeah, whether or not he wants to mess around with something like Underworld Connections is a, is a big question. So what he's going to do is he's just going to knock it down to one. That means that Jace is priced into going up. Desecration Demon is going to show up to the party. And now Figaro is going to untap. He's going to draw. So he can only do one thing with that Jace. No more cards coming off of it. And the fact that it slows down Pack Rat a little bit doesn't matter very much. Certainly doesn't matter very much for the Demon. Do you see Figaro is going to draw his card? We see the Master of Ways. It looks like that's at the ready. Jace is going to start by ticking up, of course. I think Brennan made that play in part because he knows that there's a Biden in Milton's hand, mm -hmm. so he wanted to get a flying blocker to prevent Milton from playing Biden and hitting this turn. This is a Master of Waves. Devotion check will be four, so four elemental horses are going to come into play. And DeCandio is going to untap very quickly. He'll take a draw. That's a Swamp. Actually a pretty important draw for him because he can play a Swamp, he can cast Last Breath and make a Pack Rat all in the same turn, or he can cast a Last Breath, take care of the Master of Waves, and cast the uh, the Underworld Connections as well. Either way, this is a good place to start. Yeah. I think at this point he's just going to be in Making Rats mode. We'll take a commercial to get everything set up for the finals, I assume. Like once we get there. So Brennan trying to, add to enter his attack here. Milton said that's fine. Do you think Desecration Demon maybe chases down the Jace, or do we even care about it at this point? I still think that, that Brennan's concerned clearly with the Biden. Okay. So he may want to be holding back on defense, but he's in a spot where it's pretty attractive for him to be damage racing as well. As next turn if Milton plays Biden, then he draws one card, but we're looking at two pack rat tokens in play in this world up to a third pack rat so you see red zone is where we're gonna head it's not ideal here for for Brennan to allow Milton the spot to to land Biden but with the amount of pressure that that Brennan's adding to the table this turn and the following turn he's willing to start racing the decision is Figueroa's at this point See what he wants to do. He's certainly in between a rock and a hard place right now. Although Brennan also has to, you know, this game's going to go on for a couple more turns. Long term, he also has to be concerned about Milton potentially setting up an overloaded Cyclonic Rift if he goes too far with Pack Rat. Sure. So, a lot of variables going on, certainly. See if it's time to deploy the connections, and the answer is yes. So, is going to use all of his mana past the turn back, and now, as you mentioned, a Biden can get online. I think part of the reason that Brennan wanted to play Underworld Connections that turn instead of making a rat is he's sort of forced to find more removal because he knows that Milton's going to be finding more cards over the long term. Mm -hmm. And so, he, especially Master of Waves, he's quite exposed to right now. So mm -hmm. he needs to find additional copies of Last Breath or Hero's Downfall. 
Figueroa does attack, draws some land off of the Biden trigger, so that you can play on the speaker. That comes into play, scries two cards to the bottom. See, DeCandio is going to uh, draw a card to begin things. Devour Flesh was the card you drew for the turn. Thought Seize is the card he draws off the Underworld Connections. You add that to a Desecration Demon. Those are the cards that we're looking at. Demon Triggers goes on the stack. Looks like it's time for a Red Zone attack. We see Figaro's at 24, so we got some work. We got some work to do. That's for sure. Gained four off an earlier last breath, and this is Brennan's first time connecting. This is going to be another 6-6 six, six flyer, and confidently passing the turn back. Will the black-white mid-range player, Figueroa, going to take a draw step? As you said, right now, DeCandio is exposed pretty heavily to Master of Waves, but that's not in the hand yet. Playing Demon that turn set and making Rat, of course, to have a flyer to check Judge's familiar. Mm -hmm. so. And is Figueroa priced in to maybe sacrificing the own speaker to Desecration Demon, getting with the Judge's familiar, and hopefully hitting something of relevance with the Biden. Well, he's running out of time here. He may have to, to find something. His hand is so bad. Yeah, he's moving in. Sacrifice moment speaker. Get in for one. I need a new card really bad, he says. Let's see what he finds. All right, another copy of moment speaker. That'll help. So one and two. And those both immediately go to the bottom. Figaro's hand right now is an additional copy of Biden and an island. He's going to play that island just past the turn back. So DeCandio's going to untap. He'll take a draw. Let's see what he adds to his hand. A copy of Hero's Downfall. That is a gooder. That just about locks it up here, as he now has an answer to Master of Waves. Triggers for the Demon. Will Figueroa try to sacrifice something? Will he make it so the pack rat and everybody else has to attack? The answer is yes. Biden will be activated. So everyone must get into the red zone. Even you, pack rat. I don't think you're going to find much objection from Brennan here for <laughs> everyone having to get in the red zone. Looks like we're going to see a hero's downfall cast here. Going to take care of the judges familiar. Now, devour flesh. Going to clear away the Yoma speaker. Makes it so that he can attack with everybody safely, not going to lose his pack rat, and then come across for 7. 6 is 13, plus 1 from the pack rat is 14. Figaro's going to move down to 4. I'm not quite sure there's a draw step that would get him out of this. Okay, Master of Waves. we got some. We got 3 creatures that are going to come into play. And he can sacrifice 2 to the triggers. Alright. It's a little bit of time. There's Doomblade, though. Oh, well, that'll clear that up, and that's going to clear this matchup. Brennan DeCandio is moving on to the finals. Your number one seed is unscathed this tournament. Defeating Milton Figueroa, black-white mid-range versus Mono Blue Devotion. One more time, sweetness. No stumbles with the mana, and that that point he's playing essentially a Mono Black deck mm -hmm. with Last Breath replacing some other removal spell. Mm -hmm. And he had early pack rats and good backup and navigated those games really smoothly and efficiently. And... Moving on to the finals to take on another mono blue player. Pack Rat always defeats Island. Always. Yes. Every time that a Pack Rat deck plays against Mono Blue Lotion, it always seems like the Pack Rat deck wins. Maybe I'm wrong, but it just seems like that's what always sticks out in my head, and we see it happen here yet again. But one more chance for Mono Blue Devotion to redeem itself because Tyler Wilkinson is waiting in the wings to play against Brennan DeCandio who is on the way to the finals. As we do have our winner here, we'll bring it back to the booth.